Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Woolly Cutch's knitting podcast. Um, well, knitting, crocheting, I'm learning to spin. Um, my name is Pip and I'm from South Wales. And whether this ever makes it to be on YouTube is another thing. <laughs> I've done several videos and just deleted them all. Um, a bad habit of touching my nose all the time, which is a bit annoying. Anyway, hello, enough of the waffle. Um, <clears throat> okay, I want to talk about my knitting. It's not going to be in any particular order because I'm not an ordered person. It's, yeah, it's going to be works in progress, whips, um, finished objects. Well, just as it goes. I've written some notes because I'm useless without notes. Um, <clears throat> and the first one at the top of my note is the, the last one off my needles, I think. Pretty close. Um, <clears throat> and I, this is, I'm thrilled with this. It came out just as I wanted. It's the Rolo Cowl. Uh, <clears throat> or Rolo Double Cowl is the right name. By Susanna Cartinen, I want to say. I'm not very good with names. Uh, K-A-A-R. T I N E N. Um, it's I've got the pattern here. There's the pattern. So you can wear it with the stripes on the outside, or I prefer it obviously with the the colour work on. Um, and then it's got a nice inside. So it's double layered, and it's it's just big enough. Um, it's not. You know, I've got bigger ones for, but this is the smallest one I've knitted and it sits just right. It's not too tight, not too loose. Um, it just sits comfortable. And the yarn that I've knitted it in is West Yorkshire Spinners um, in their Exquisite, which I hadn't used. And I didn't think I'd had before, but then later on I, I discovered that I did have it in a mini set once. Um, but I love this yarn. Um, so soft it was a bit although it's the identical yarn the orange definitely felt thicker than the blue whether that's the dye on it or I don't know because it's you know it's all four ply but um, it did feel slightly thicker when I was knitting you know not much in it but uh, and you can't tell in the cowl and it's not colors I normally go for but um, I just liked them as soon as I saw them. We went on holiday uh, to Newquay, West Wales. I love it there. And uh, in Aberaeron, I think that's how you pronounce it, just up the road, is I found a wool shop. Um, I think it's called Shirley's Wool Shop. Um, and it's a real Aladdin's cave. It's fantastic. She's got some really nice quality yarn in there. It's got mixed mixture well from all price ranges, really. Um, and yeah, it, um, when I can, I love to go into a yarn shop so you can feel the yarn before you, you buy, because that's the trouble with buying online. Um, I mean, nine times out of 10, it's okay, but every now and again, you get something and you think, mm, you know, don't like the feel of that. And if you're anything like me, if you don't like the feel of it, you don't want to knit on it. Um, I haven't actually brought it in. It's just made me think now I'm doing, um, a long sort of wrap round cowl for my niece. Um, I started it last year and then some it didn't get finished for the winter so summer came so it was an excuse to put it away. I really needed to get out and re knit on it for her but I really don't like the yarn that it's in. It's a, it's a um, I think it's a chunky yarn and I'm sorry if you can hear one of my dogs barking. It's a chunky yarn and um I've gone off knitting with chunky yarns. I find I've got arthritis in my hands. I just don't find the. I used to love chunky because everything flies off the needles, doesn't it? It's so quick. But I do find it uncomfortable in my hands. I do for finer yarns and smaller needles now. So anyway, um, I digress. Um, so this is knitting. This is I do my Yorkshire spinners. 
exquisite and the colour is if I've got it right is Bloomsbury is the orange and Regal is the blue um, and then you've got the, the stripy insides it's very cosy I definitely I'm not normally a lover once I've done a pattern I want to do something different I don't normally like re-knitting it's like been there done that don't want to do that again um but i definitely see me knitting more of these because it was quite quick really quite a quick knit i think they make great gifts as well and i want some more in different colors because you can't have enough can you um so that is that one i think i've told you everything about that one that one and the pattern to one side um right Another finished object is, I always want to say Musselburgh, and it's Musselburgh hat, named after the place, by, oh God, here we go, Ysolda Teague, Y-S-O-L-D-A, Teague, um, and this was part um, Ange of Yarn and Yarns podcast and um, shop, online shop, Um Anne was doing a knit along with her hats and I think most of us, well, I copied everybody else was doing this so I decided to do it and I'm pleased with it as well. Um, the Musselburgh hat um, and I cannot remember, I don't know what I've done with the label off the yarn. It's a hand dyed yarn and I had it in, um, I had last year, first time ever I had Advent and I bought one off um Ange of Yarn and Yarns and I did a yarn swap one with Anne of Spa Knits. We did an advent swap. Um and it was mostly minis, um 10 gram minis and then for the 25th day for Christmas Day there was a, a full hank scheme, whatever you want to call it, in there. And this was I can't remember which one it was from. I I got a feeling it was from Anne, but I can't be definite. Um, and if either of you watch, you may remember. It's beautiful anyway. I love it. Um, love the colours in it. It's quite raspberry. And I got all the way to there before I ran out with a single skein. So I managed to pick. I had the minis and I wound all the minis up. And put them in a bag. I was going to knit my to swear blanket, but I got bored with that, so I've started. I'll show you them. Starting to do some gloves with them instead, um, and I've managed to find a mini that had similar tones, had the raspberry in it. And although you can see, because it's on the inside, I don't mind that it was as close as I could get. Um, and then, obviously, once it's in the right way. You can't see it anyway. I'm not putting it on because I've got my hair up and I look blooming awful in a hat. But yeah, it was uh, that was a nice knit, nice easy knit. Nice. I like the crown. I like the way that the that's done. Um, yeah, cosy, nice. Keep my ears warm when I'm out dog walking. Although I look blooming, I do. I look blooming awful in a hat. But needs must when you're cold. So that's that one. Um, see if I ruin my nose again. I keep doing it. Uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. Right, the other I did in minis was my um, scrappy mittens. And they are a pattern. Everything November fingerless mitts by Jen Yard. And there's the, there's the pattern. You can pick those up. And so I started using, in no particular order, just grabbing one out of a bag, using my minis, using a bit. Um, so you can see where I, uh, if I have my head in, in program watching it, I've been hitting away and saying, oops, I need to change. But I quite like that with the large and the small stripes. Random. So, yeah, they're not matching at all. But they are a nice size. Um, I'm just pleased with them. It's a three by one rib. 
and it just fits nice just long enough and if you know it's quite nice to keep it warm but if you find it too warm or too long you just fold it back I just thought they're handy fingerless mitts and I did another pair again not identical but kind of matching because it's the same colours and hold it up here I think the one is a fraction fraction longer I don't think you notice when it's on um obviously I wasn't too good with the measuring tape um this yarn I wanted to go for quite a while excuse me a minute have a sip of uh Good to dry mouth. Um, I wanted to go to alternate universe. I'd um, I'd seen seen it on Instagram, and I'd also seen some podcasts from there. So not last birthday, the birthday before. Uh, nagged hubby to take me. Um, I could have got myself, but nagged him to take me. This cleave cleave done it's Clevedon. It's the other side of Bristol to me. Um, and right, she's got Instagram. Um, on the back of here, it's got at AU for Alternate Universe, um, Shop UK, or Kim Smith Happy. Now, I know her Instagram, her own personal one is Kim Smith Happy on Instagram. And then there's the shop one, which I maybe I've watched and I can't, I should have written it down. Maybe AU shop. Um, but I'm sure if you go to her Kim Smith Happy one, there must be a link to her shop. Um, her and her mum, lovely, so inviting, such a warm shop. Uh, first time I've ever been in a yarn shop and got offered a cuppa. That was rather nice. Um, and this is a mixture of ones they've put together themselves most of them are west yorkshire spinners the first one is exquisite that's where i didn't realize i'd had it before um which is falkland island wool and mulberry silk mulberry silk and then there's a boo base by pixie yarn in conquer and then bow peep which again is by west yorkshire spinners um signature four ply also by Westminster West Yorkshire Spinners. And then the fifth one was natural sock, and that's by Emma of Woolly Mammoth Fibers. So that's what's in these, and they're all lovely. I like the colours, that's why I bought the set of minis, and I've got enough to make her another one. What were these for they? I can't remember if they were 10 or 20 gram minis. I think they were 20 gram minis, I think. Anyway, that's those. So that's the mittens that I've knitted so far for, they're going to be Christmas prezies. I'm not sure who's getting them yet, but um, if nobody wants them, I'll buy them two pairs. Um, all right, what's next? Done the, the mittens and that. Oh, whips. Um, I knitted the half and half triangles wrap. And I liked it. Um, I'd seen it a few times. Uh, Inga in particular from um, Knitting Traditions podcast has made a lot of um, half and half wraps. And I always liked hers, but I thought they'd be really boring to knit on. But they're not, considering there's so much garter stitch in them. I just thoroughly enjoyed it. The first one, um, the yarn is gorgeous. It is so soft and squishy. Oh, I meant to bring in the labels for them and I've forgotten them. Um, but they're both from Almas of Witchcrafty Lady on um, Etsy. She's on Instagram as well. Um, but Almas yarn. It's quality yarn, beautifully dyed, and at a really reasonable price. 
and she always does her best to you know if if i like this one i bought um from wonderwell um in both wells i've only ever been to one yarn shop and that was this last year went to wonderwell um and i bought this one not knowing what i was going to use it for and i liked it um but i haven't bought enough of it and when i contacted her she managed to find some more of it so i could finish this and this i think is um i think it's i want to say paul dark it's not paul dark it's paul dale um in olive um they're both they're both beautiful um and obviously as you know you can wear it like that or like that or however you want to wear it but what i love about it is i can go out with it around my neck if it's you know a bit of cold day it's lovely you can wrap it around i mean you can stick it up over your head and snuck into it if you want real granny and also another granny thing i like to do is put it over my knees if i'm sat and my legs get cold it's just yeah it's just really handy um but yeah i thoroughly enjoyed this yarn and then um i wanted to do another one um and i wasn't sure of colors so i was looking and browsing colors in this bag and um i really liked this color um and this drops flora um it is nice it is lovely a bit more rustic and not quite as squishy as the yarn from almas um this is color number 17. let's see what it says what it's made of uh 65 percent wool 35 percent alpaca and um it's i think i'm knitting on um I think I'm knitting on 3.25 needles. And we've got so far, so far. But yeah, I mean, the only bit you've got to concentrate on is when you wrap and turn. And I know some people do it with short rows. I quite like the wrap and turn. I find that easy. Um, and then it's just garter stitch. And I really thought it would bore me to tears, but it's... Um, it's one of those things that you can knit on when you're chatting, when I'm in the car, because I can't look down when I'm in the car. I, I get motion sick, so I can just, because it's just garter, I can just knit away on it. Um, just glance at it now and again. <clears throat> the only thing I would say about this yarn, against the yarn from Almas, is it splits. <clears throat> not an awful lot, but you do have to keep your eye on it that it's not, you know, even you've, you've got the whole strand not half a strand um that's the only downside sometimes i get cross because i gotta undo it and uh, make sure i've picked up the, the, all of the stitch and i i was looking through the colors and i didn't know what color to pick to go with it um and my husband who never pays any attention to my knitting at all he picked the color to go with it which is drops floor again and I need to yeah it's more like the colour in the shade it's not not as bright as that um and the light's making it if you look at the bottom colour that's more the colour it is so it's these two together and this is colour number 11 so that will be the the other half of the triangle um but i do like drops yarn because i think it's it's um it's reasonably priced it's um it's a nice yarn and it yeah so when you want to knit on all the things you kind of be a bit careful um and then <coughs> the other work in progress which again I bought from Shoe's Wool Shop in Aberiron. Um, I shouldn't put a label on it. This was a free pattern she gave me and she was knitting on this. Um, and it's a lovely wrap. 
laurel -y. Um, and it's it's um, by Claudia Worsing um, Juniper for Juniper Moon. I always have trouble with Juniper. Um, and it's basically rib in, you know, going one way, going the other way. Um, it's quite, quite easy. And when you're on a, a run, you, you, you can just see where you've been and what you're doing. And then every so often, then it changes to why are you doing it that way? And then it changes to a, um, so again, quite a simple knit. Um, it doesn't look very wonderful on the needles, but I'm sure once it's blocked out, it'll sit nicely. Um, it's very fine, fine yarn it. Oh, so soft. It is so soft. And I hadn't knit with it before. Um, and it's Juniper Moon fine yarn. Um, do I have a tag? I do. So, Juniper Moon. Harriet Fine. Um, and it's colour 2060. 75% alpaca. 25% polyamide and it's from the hand wash lay flat um, so that's what's in there and then this I've been wanting one of these um, for a long time for graphs and it just clips around the graft I'm not going to show you the graft because obviously it's paid for pattern but you can just Put your paper in, flip it around, and then you can just move it up. And I think it's a fab tool. It's, I always sit there with the ruler, and then the ruler moves. Whereas with this, it doesn't really. You've got to give it quite a shove for it to move. <clears throat> and this was from the the knitting gift shop. But when I looked online, um, they were always out of stock. So, oh, excuse me. <coughs> Dry throat. Um, so the year before last, I couldn't. I wanted to go to um, Wonderwall, um, but I couldn't. I was looking after my mum, and I had an elderly dog. I asked for permission to take the dog, and they said no, so I couldn't go. Um, could have got, you know, one of my daughters would have sat with my mum. And I couldn't go, um, so I asked lovely Ange of Aunt Yarn and Yarns if she would see if there was one at the show, and she got it for me. It's uh, fab, absolutely fab. I love it. I'm so you know pleased that Ange was kind enough to go and look for me and find it. Uh, and obviously, it's got the measurements as well. But I mostly use it just as for the lines on colour work or pattern. I love the tool. So, right, shove these back in the bag out of the way. What else have I been knitting on? Um, if I could, I would spend my days walking my dogs and knitting and maybe some cooking. But unfortunately, life gets in the way and housework. Oh, well. Grandkids don't stop me knitting that chair because it was watching them play. <laughs> They're very good. So anyway, where were we? We've done that, we've done that. Oh that project bag. That was from Yarn and Yarns as well. Um it's um it's an Emma Ball one, but it says uh Janie Crow on it, which I think might be the person that designed the pattern. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> and then the bags by Emma Ball. And they, I find they're great. I just pull tie, <coughs> do them up. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's got Janie Crow on the side, but it also had an Emma Ball tag on it. And um, that's that one. All right, what else have we got? Oh, socks. Uh, where's the bag? Oh, there's the bag up there. 
this is my cute little bag just perfect for socks with the toady on it and the toad stools i think it's a toad could be a frog i'm not sure uh, whatever it's cute i like i had this off um etsy and then i noticed on a, a podcast of um inga knitting traditions that she's got the bigger one it's, um but i fell for this one and i i just wanted a little bag for socks it's the blue rabbit house i think that is the maker i think if you look up blue rabbit house on etsy um i just naughty i just sit and browse project bags and and i saw this one I had it a couple of years now i think added a while um yeah it says the blue rabbit house unique designs and illustrations on the inside and this is a vanilla sock um by the crazy sock lady Kay Litton. um it's the four ply pattern i've got the dk pattern as well but this is four ply and then this yarn i had from yarn and yarns d stash and um when it came uh, and it was hanked skein whatever you want to say <clears throat> it was all the dark down the one end and all the light up the other end and then when i um which is a bit messy now because i've been working with it when i wound it off it reminds me of a licorice all sort and then seeing it knitted up and seeing the stripes that come and yeah you've got the i don't know what you want to call that so every now and again there's like a splodge which i think is lovely but it does remind me of licorice all sorts and this is just a vanilla sock with i think you call it the heel flap and turn i think that's what it's called that's the one i like to do i'm not very keen on the i've only done one um after heel afterthought heel um and i just found that a bit pointy I'm not sure if that's called the fish lips kiss or not. I'm not sure. Um, I'm pretty new to sock knitting. It took me a long time to get it. I tried Magic Loop, DPNs. I tried a tiny little circular. And I think I was trying too hard. I just couldn't get it. I kept trying. I kept trying. I remember I bought some sock yarn. I sold the sock yarn because I wasn't doing it. Um, I thought, well, everybody's doing it. Why can't I do it? So I had another go and um, I got there at last. And I thought, what on earth was all the fuss? I just don't know. I think I was just... I do prefer Magic Loop. I can do it with DPNs as well, but I prefer Magic Loop. And I'm on... I think these are my... I think they're Chargoos with the red cable. They're nice needles. Um, I've just come off the rib and started on the, the stocking stitch for the second one. I've got quite a few first socks and I haven't done the second ones because I get, it's like a fine new yarn and I'm not going to knit with that one. So I need to dig out all the others and make a second sock so I can have a bit. Oops. So anyway, so, <clears throat> right, so that's that one. The um, the other thing I'm doing, um, work in progress, is a jumper for my middle grandson. Um, I've got five grandchildren, three boys, two girls. Yeah, <laughs> just checking <laughs> my maths. Um, this is... I go to craft on a Thursday and um, we do all sorts. A um, couple of us are knitters, some are doing tapestry, one does beadwork, beautiful beadwork. Um, and one of the other knitters was knitting from this book, um, Sirdar. So she was knitting a cardigan for herself, but I really liked the boys jumper that's in it. I don't know if you'll pick up the detail or not. It's a bit like a Guernsey. Um, it's got the Aran across the top, plain, and then 
the bottom's a bit fancy. And uh, so I got onto eBay, I think it was, and I found the book and ordered it and it came. And of course, straight away, I wanted to cast on. So dove through my, um, had a dive through my stash and found a massive big ball of, um, got a label here somewhere. Robin Aaron with wool. Uh, I'm not a lover of <coughs> acrylic wools. I just don't like the feel of it on my needles, but this one's not too bad, probably because it's got a bit of wool in it. Um, I'm very fussy with the way it feels on my needles. If it's squeaky at all, I can't, mm, it goes through me, I can't do it. So this is like a, like a charcoal colour. You can see all the flecky bits in it. And I thought, well, that'd be, that'd be nice. Um, possibly the detail won't show up that much but you know it'd still be a nice warm jumper for him and I just wanted to knit the pattern and I thought if, if I really like it I might do another one in a lighter colour um, and see how it goes <coughs> so I knit the back um, and I wanted to measure it against him because it does look a bit big for him but actually it's, it's not too bad against him um, It'll be one of those over jumpers for the winter. So you've got the top bit is patterned and then the plane. And then I like the rib as well. You've got the cable in the rib, which is a nice drop shoulder um, knitting panels. That's the way I learned to knit was knitting panels. Um, only so I found YouTube really that I learned about patterns knit top down, um, <clears throat> more of a European thing, I think, than rather well, it's yeah, it's common over here now. But uh, there's always, always patterns were done in pieces and then you sew them together. Uh, I've been knitting since I was, um, I think about seven, six, seven, <clears throat> so 50 plus years, um, and uh. My mum taught me to knit. Um, I knitted quite a bit for my children until they got to the age they didn't want knitted things. Um, and I had a machine as well. I did some on the machine. Although I find that quite boring, just... Um, it's quick, but a bit tedious. And, you, you know, you've got this great big machine out as well, which takes up a lot of room. Um... And my mum taught me to knit and I just, I usually get bored with things. A typical Gemini, what I enjoyed today, I'm fed up with tomorrow, but not never with knitting. I might knit more at a time and then not knit so much and then back again, but I've never fallen out of love with knitting. Um, and I like crocheting as well. Um, probably don't crochet anywhere near as much as I knit. I prefer a lot of things I prefer knitted rather than crochet. So I love crochet for blankets and things like that, but not so keen on crocheted clothes. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I was saying about that jumper. So I got it out to show on him and I don't like that grandma. I want blue. How lovely. Um... Yeah, I knitted him a blue one. He wanted a blue jumper with a red dragon. So I've done him that one last year. Um, but he wants another blue one. So I'm just going to carry on and knit it. He'll either, he might wear it once he's done. Um, or I keep it for my younger grandson to wear. But I think, you know, um, well, otherwise it'll be gifted. Pity it's not big enough for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying that one. So that's that piece done. Where are we? Um, just as well, I did. Uh... Oh, all right. Blanket next. <clears throat> Another 
Emma ball bag with the nose on. I've got two of these, but the one's got a zip on it, which I don't like. I always catch the wool in it. I much prefer the pull ties. So in the future, I'm going to stick to pull ties. It's a lovely bag, but the problem is, is I try to put too much in them. And then the yarn's catching in the zip. Because um, all of my bags are always full. Um, <clears throat> this one, my um, cousin-in-law, husband's cousin, <clears throat> I knit a, um, crocheted a baby blanket for her last year, I think. Last year or the year before. And she asked me if I'd do another one um for just after christmas january the something or other a relative of hers having a baby and um so she wanted white because we don't know whether the baby's a boy or a girl um, so the way it's double thickness i think it's finished as in the size of it I think it's plenty big enough because you want it too big if it's for a pram <coughs> or a push chair because then it's dangling on the floor. You can fold it in half or triangle or, or whatever. Um, I've got ends to sew in. Um, but this was a pattern off. I just found a pattern on YouTube. I learned, my grandmother taught me to crochet, but my grandmother never followed a pattern. She, um, she knit, she, oh, knitted, crochet does beautiful dresses, the one here, my sister and I, when we were little. Um, they were in gold. It was like a, a rich, deep gold, not a bright gold. Um, and it was, whatever the thread was, I remember them being heavy. I don't know what ever happened to them. I've not found them in the attic or anything. I don't know whether mum must have given them away. Um, it's a shame I would have, would have liked to have still had them. Um, they were beautiful. They were sort of fitted here and then out um, crochet dresses. I said they were very heavy, but oh, they were gorgeous. Not that I wanted to wear them because I was a proper tomboy and I only wanted to wear jeans. But when I think back now to them, I appreciate them more. Um, and so she taught me to crochet and I knew how to do granny squares, but I didn't know what the stitches were called. So I think it was... I think it was before lockdown I think I found YouTube channels with crochet and the one that I got on best with for tutorials was um, Crystal from Bag O'Day Crochet but because she's American um, I learned in American terms not in British terms so the double crochet that I know I believe is a triple in in the English terms um, and I'm not that good at reading patterns um, but I can follow once I've seen the stitch I'm a way to go then so I just found this I wanted something a bit lacy but not too there's some nice ones with sort of lacier and bobblier but because we don't know whether it's a boy or a girl I didn't want it to be too feminine just a baby lace blanket that you could you know and obviously in white for both and i need to i think the, the size is big enough and i need to check with Haley um because last time she wanted tassels on it which i love doing um and i expect she's going to want tassels on this one which um, i think i have to get some more yarn as well I just got this one. Um, it's just, I find this um, nice for baby blankets because it washes like a rag. Um, I did my grandchildren. Um, there's a granny square one and a stripy one, but in quite bright colours um, for them when they were little for their dolls and, and things. They're, they're upstairs. Um, my oldest granddaughter, she's always got them around her dolls. And I just find that it just, it washes and dries like a rag. So in case baby's sick on it or whatever, they can just throw it in the washing machine. 
and it's really reasonably priced. I think it's less than two pound a ball. Um, and I don't find it too bad for the acrylicness because um, I think it is 100% acrylic. Yeah, 100% superior acrylic. Um, I do find I've used this a lot. And like I said, I don't mind the feel of it. It's not too squeaky. So I shall need to find out whether she wants tassels and, and do that. They take a lot of yarn. Um, I've only got that one ball left. But I can I can get more locally. Uh, and it's not too bad. It did. Uh, I've got to be careful with my crochet because I don't do an awful lot of crochet to make sure that it. I don't go off in a slope or anything, but it. It's meeting end to end and it hasn't been blocked yet. I think I'll do the tassels first and then wash it. Because as clean as I try and keep my hands, you do find that with white, I think anyway, it gets a little grubby in the making. So I like to get it nice and fresh and clean, especially as it's going to be a gift. And check that because everything in this house comes with complimentary animal hair with three dogs and two cats. So I have to check everything is um, is free of hair before it goes off. And then, because I was showing you my other cowl, um, this one I did not so long ago. Now, sorry, Rebecca, if I get this wrong. I think it's the Chargill. I want to say it's the Chargill, if I didn't write it down. Um, but this pattern is by Rebecca of the Crayer Bear. And this cowl is bigger so you can bunch it up and keep you really warm um, and I don't mind this wool I know some people would find it a bit a bit sort of not prickly maybe a bit itchy but as long as I don't get too hot I find it fine um, it's quite snuggly and it's um, woolly knits British wool and I think it's just pink. I don't think there's a maybe rose pink or something on it. Um, and drops mohair, drops kids silk mohair, I think it is, um, in a matching pink. And I love this. She's got a, she's um, Rebecca of the Crayer Bear. I think it's Rebecca Crow. Probably all of you know her out there. She's on, she's got her own, uh, the Crayer Bear YouTube channel and um on Ravelry with her patterns um blows my mind she compared to me 50 plus years of knitting um and she's whizzing off patterns left right and center with also I've yeah I've, I've got the Kerr jumper I loved um her detail and shaping is brilliant. She's a very clever young lady. Um, and she's got the jumper pattern in this stitch, which I want to make. Um, it's on my, my to-do list um, because I think it's beautiful. It's, uh, and again, you know, it's... I can't remember if it's a four row repeat, but it's, yeah, it's really, it looks so fancy, but it's so easy. Um, once you've done one or two, you're just away. Mm, well, I, I was. Um, but I hadn't done it before, and yeah, it was. Um, so that's another cowl. Keep me warm. I'm not walking my doggies. Um. I think that's done that, done that. I think that's by oh I also found when I was in my stash diving for some wool for this this one. I found a lot of this in Aaron. Um James C. Brett, Aztec Aaron with Alpaca. Um and this is another, it's a 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca, but again, it's it's okay. It's 
it passes the me test <laughs> it feels fine i have knit something in it and i can't remember what maybe a hat or something last year or the year before must have been the year before i'd remember otherwise <laughs> short-term memory um but yeah i want to do another one in this then um for one of the granddaughters maybe if i knit two see if they like them um doing one each but i like that pattern a lot so and i thought this would be and i've got enough of this definitely to make one possibly to make two i haven't actually worked it out yet and this is shade al4 100 grams Yeah, 90 acrylic, 10 alpaca. And it's 190 metres or 208 yards. Wow. And yeah, I've, I've got quite a few of those upstairs, so I'll have to dig them out. I don't have a craft room. This is really my, what was my mum's house. I came, we moved here to look after my mum three and a half years ago. And then mum passed away a year ago. Um, so this, I'm in what was my mum's office and, um, I don't have a, a craft room as such. So I've got yarn stuffed in all places under the stairs cupboard, some upstairs in the cupboard. So I'm going to go hunting around to see what I've got where, but it's quite nice because you pull stuff out and think, oh, I forgot I had that. Whereas I suppose if I saw it all the time, but it's, yeah, it's hiding. So, <laughs> uh. Right, uh, anything else? Anything else I need to? I hope I've told you everything. Um, oh, reading, listening. I started reading in the summer. Um, I'm not a very fast reader. I see some people that eat books. I do like to read on a nice summer's day, sat in the garden or on holiday. That sort of thing. Sometimes when I go to bed, I'll pick up a book and read a page or two. But I started reading and then um, went over on to audio, audio books, audible books um, and listened to. And it's it's read by herself. And I love Miriam. And I always thought it was Miriam Margoyles. But it's not. It's Miriam Margulies. That's the way she pronounced it, which probably everybody knew but me. I don't know why I was called a Miriam Margulies, but like I said, I'm not good with names. But Miriam Margulies reading her own autobiography. It's hysterical. <laughs> she just says things as they are. And you, if you do cringe, I just think, no, <laughs> I don't believe you just said that. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thought it was brilliant. Um, she's somebody I'd love to be friends with. I just, she's just, yeah. <laughs> um, and at the moment watching on Amazon, um, I love whodunits. I love, um, God. I quite like scary stuff. And I also like, um, natural, um, natural, um, true crime um when they go over cold cases etc i i find it um i was never clever enough in school but i think if i had been i would have liked to have been forensic scientist um or gone down that that path um forensic detecting you know cold case things it's like a big puzzle isn't it putting it together and to be able to solve those things for the family must be amazing um and so i'm watching the new um sherlock holmes um and watson elementary on amazon which is a modern day take on sherlock holmes and there's a lot of series and i am really enjoying them some of them are a bit mm, but most of them i found really good um so when i'm knitting away of an evening i'm not a big tv watcher i do tend to 
either watch podcasts, something on Amazon. Um, I've now got into listening to Audible books, Audible books, however you say it. Um, and I think it's the adverts on the telly as well. Plus, if I'm sat watching TV, uh, my husband hates adverts. So if I'm knitting and maybe not concentrating but listening to the TV, he skipped then adverts and then he's decided he's watching something else. And I suddenly think, hang on a minute, what's that to that? And didn't realise we're on a totally different programme. <laughs> so I just watched my own. <laughs> and cinema. We went to the cinema, which is something we haven't done for quite a while. Um, but uh, Mike quite fancied The Great Escaper, which I thought was going to be similar to The Great Escape um, film. Not at all. Um apart from the fact it's wartime, with uh, Michael Caine and Glenda Jackson. And I found it very emotional. Um, you need your waterproof mascara. But I think probably for my age, I don't know if the kids would appreciate it the same, but Mike and I both thoroughly enjoyed it. We thought it was a brilliant film, well done. Um, and it makes you realise that uh, my parents era why they were so resourceful and just get on and make amend attitude when you see what they went through in the war time and uh, now we expect everything easy I think but I did enjoy that film that's what I would recommend if you like old people <laughs> acting um and yeah, it's basically him going back over his wartime memories. But yeah, it's good. Glenda Jackson was very good in it because I'm not a lover of her, to be honest, but she was very, very good. So, and that's it. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Um, hopefully, if this does make it to YouTube, I shall see now. <laughs> like, try and edit. I haven't got a clue. I haven't edited anything before. So, this is going to be a first time. So, I might lose the whole lot. Um, I might, yeah, I don't know what I might do, <laughs> but yeah, um, please be kind, please be gentle, mm -hmm. but please, by all means, be critical because that's how we learn, but in a nice way. Um, and I hope I make more. I don't have anybody at home to talk knitting to, um. None of them are interested. I thought my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter, was going to get interested. She started having a go. She's nine now. Um, but then, no, she didn't really want to learn properly. She was just wrapping the yarn around the needles. Um, and I bought the Whirly Whirly knitting machine. Um, and I did a few hats for the homeless on it with scraps. But I don't like it. Again, it's just sitting there going... And I thought that the kids might have fun with it, but no, they did a bit and they're like, no. So I'm probably going to resell that one because um, it's been sat there now for quite a while collecting dust. Um, and I think that's, that's it. So let me know what you think. Um, I'm hoping, like I said, I don't have anybody to talk yarn with at home. My only knitting community is YouTube and um, Instagram. Um, so I thought it would be nice to say things and get um, a response. Um, I hope it's a good one. So anyway, bye bye for now. And I hope you're all doing your knitting and enjoying it or whatever craft it is you do. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Take care. Bye.